Caliban and the Witch Women The New Commons and the Substitute for the Lost Land It was from this alliance between the crafts and the urban authorities, along with the continuing privatization of land, that a new sexual division of labor, or better, a new, quote, sexual contract, in Carol Pateman's words, was forged, defining women in terms mothers, wives, daughters, widows, that hid their status as workers, while giving men free access to women's bodies, their labor, and the bodies and labors of their children. Footnote. In a thorough critique of 17th century social contract theory, as formulated by Thomas Hobbes and John Locke, Carol Pateman argues that the, quote, social contract was based on a more fundamental sexual contract, which recognized men's right to appropriate women's bodies and women's labor. End of footnote. According to this new social sexual contract, proletarian women became for male workers the substitute for the land lost to the enclosures, their most basic means of reproduction, and a communal good anyone could appropriate and use at will. Echoes of this, quote, primitive appropriation can be heard in the concept of the, quote, common woman, which in the 16th century qualified those who prostituted themselves. Footnote. Ruth Mazo Karras writes that, quote, common woman meant a woman available to all men, unlike common man, which denoted someone of humble origins and could be used in either a derogatory or laudatory sense. It did not convey any meaning of either of non-Gentile behavior or of class solidarity. End of footnote. But in the new organization of work, every woman, other than those privatized by bourgeois men, became a communal good. For once women's activities were defined as non-work, women's labor began to appear as a natural resource, available to all, no less than the air we breathe or the water we drink. This was, for women, a historic defeat. With their expulsion from the crafts and the devaluation of reproductive labor, poverty became feminized, and to enforce men's, quote, primary appropriation of women's labor, a new patriarchal order was constructed, reducing women to a double dependence on employers and on men. The fact that unequal power relations between women and men existed even prior to the advent of capitalism as did a discriminating sexual division of labor, does not detract from this assessment. For in pre-capitalist Europe, women's subordination to men had been tempered by the fact that they had access to the commons and other communal assets, while in the new capitalist regime, women themselves became the commons, as their work was defined as a natural resource, laying outside the sphere of market relations. End of section.